to just take in one to two minutes to just gather ourselves with the focus on our breath or the chant then we'll begin Good evening to some and good morning to the others. Thank you for joining us. And uh, there are quite a few people who are sick. So I don't know if there would be anybody else who would be coming, but we'll start with it. So um, if there's anything right now before we even begin, please feel free to unmute anything you thought about, any reflection from last time. Otherwise, I'll share the screen. I mean, why did I share the screen? And we can take up something interesting at that today. Uh, so this is March 28, 1970. And the source is the incarnate word. So it's from uh, Mother and Sri Aurobindo. And uh, this is from the mother, basically. And the question is, from here, they asked, is the aim of life to be happy? So, uh, would anybody uh, like to unmute and read? Otherwise, I'll be happy to take us. Taru, you are, uh, I think, audibility, na? Beach, beach, mein, it's like going up and down. So, keep the mic close to you. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. So they asked, is the aim of life to be happy? So mother is saying, so I replied, this is just putting things topsy-turvy. The aim of human life is to discover the divine and to manifest it. Naturally, this discovery leads to happiness but this happiness is a consequence, not an aim in itself. And it is this mistake of taking a mere consequence for the aim of life that has been the cause of most of the miseries afflicting humanity. What do they mean by happiness? Yes, everyone thinks it's his or her personal little happiness and that's the cause of the whole misery. They did put to be happy is the aim of life. Is the aim of life to be happy? That's amazing. And that's just what has distorted things. It's the source of everything. Me, I'm happy if I kill someone. So let me kill someone. Mother laughs. Yes, they always put the little person at the center. Yes, always, always. Yeah, so just this much uh, we'll be reading today right now. So again, the focus for us has been like, you know, what we have started is the purpose, the aim of human life, you know, human birth. And here, again, you know, we are running after comfort because comfort gives us happiness about conveniences, running after things. 
especially you know when you move to a western country you know the extent of the consumerism like when you walk into a store you know the i don't know size of the store it hits you right it's like is that a possibility like it has to be so big it's like it it is there and yet it becomes more real when you see the expanse of it so is the aim of my life not to be happy is not what everything that i'm doing including you know anything spiritual i could be doing is it not towards being happy just wanted to reflect on this together and yeah i'll stop and welcoming reflections comments questions i think this is extremely extremely what can i say important not only important also just like setting the inner compass right i think it's very important for each one of us because i you know since we in our work we meet many many people and each one including you know uh, starting from teenage to adult young adults and you know others adults we see that they are just cribbing mostly about that i am not happy and uh, you know a day before yesterday i was meeting a couple of people and very good like upper middle class middle class you know good well to do everything they have you know car property wealth and just also seeing that these things don't bring us happiness like for example if i craved for a certain brand of a car and now i see that i have it but i'm still unhappy i think even that is a continuation of this what you just shared that that if we actually run towards these material possessions which we may think that they may bring us happiness but that's not true because if a thar brings happiness then it would statistically mean that all the people who have thar are the most happy but that's not the case but the very same guy he was actually sharing which i found very interesting he was sharing that i i used to take care of my car you know before this phase happened i used to really take care of my car you know clean it keep it nicely that brought me a lot of satisfaction so it's not about thar or no thar or you know a broken car or whatever it's about the effort he's putting you know the intimacy he's developing in taking care of things and mother also talks about you know keeping things nicely taking care of things and our own life and i think with with anything if we develop this sense of intimacy and take care you know either with our being we take care of our being nurture our being and little little things it's not the things that give, that are giving us happiness but the intimacy and the effort that we put there so i think this is so beautiful and puts things right in perspective that what about my life now you know am i nurturing my life and i am i taking care or always just demanding that mujhe khushi nahi mil rahi mujhe khushi nahi mil rahi you know and also to look at kyu nahi mil rahi you know why am i not getting happiness and also because as mother shares at other place that progress brings joy and wherever there is progress there will be a side effect of it will be joy like a by product and progress always always requires effort so am i ready to put effort at the right places you know so that i am progressive in life and that's the you know crux of contentment and growth and joy yeah so thank you for bringing that up is reminded me of the article that we had been reading the creative soul although we have uh, read it you know this segment and yet it's um, very um, relatable right like you know about never finding it right in the places that we 
think we'll find it at the places where we work so hard, like the whole life is centered towards that. So here it says that the fourth of circumstances, the pressure of environment or simply the momentum of custom or habit compel them to choose the easiest and the readiest way that may lie before them. Right? Circumstances, environment, momentum of custom or habit to choose the easiest and readiest way that may lie before them. They do not consult the demand of the inner being, but the requirement of the moment. Our bodily needs, our vital hungers, and our mental prejudices obsess and obscure the impulsions that thrill the hidden spirit. So bodily needs, vital hungers, and mental prejudices obsess and obscure. And this was really good. We hasten to gratify the immediate and forget the eternal. We clutch at the shadow and let go the substance. We are carried away in the flux and tumult of life. The immediate thing, this I feel is very big because there's a desire, say again, you're saying of a thar, right? And I see the thar, right? I see it around me. It's it kind of, and I keep getting reminded and it keeps getting, I don't know, you know, the fuel keeps getting added. And yet when I talk about eternal, firstly, one feels that, oh, there's too much time for that, right? And then, this is real, right? It's material. I can touch a thar. People are driving. Who knows whether, you know, eternity, I don't know what will happen, divine. Is it even true? And also, I think the ability that on a grosser realm, it appears like all that I have to do, it's like the easiest way he's saying, you know, all that I have to do is accumulate some money, which again may require some pressure but i'll take that pressure or ask someone for money and go to a showroom and you know buy it on my name so it appears on the whole very simple rather than going deep within or whatever you know forget about the process but we don't realize that what i am wanting from buying a thar is contentment and that's what i think we don't realize as in prayers and meditations mothers pointing out that as if what is wrong with mankind, mother says that the very boons that we want, we actually, they, when they come to us, we run away from them. You know, so I think we are wanting contentment, but as you were sharing, just looking at it at the wrong places, you know, where nobody has got it so far. And if thar or wealth was the thing, then all the people who are most wealthy would be most contented. But that is not true. That is not true. No. And even that doesn't open our eyes. <laughs> Such is the blindness. And uh, parallelly, I also see that it's like as if I need some amount of love for myself. Because I'm, if I'm really nurturing, caring for myself, then I will be very sensitive that no, you know, this doesn't bring me that satisfaction that I was looking for. While if I just am you know, like truly kind in a gesture or just truly deeply caring for my heart's true need, then each day, each moment can be that fulfilling which I expect from other things. So I think that intimacy with oneself is also lacking, which that's why I have to come back home to myself and ask myself, no, but that is not fulfilling, you know, that is not fulfilling. Yeah. So to be honest. Mm -hmm. to be conscious right like wondering kind of reflecting on the word what is it to be conscious and to be conscious of the choices i have made and the choices that i'm making like again it doesn't mean i'll stop right it doesn't mean that i just change in a jiffy and yet at least i might know what i'm doing and why Right? I am holding on to this situation or this person or this job because I think this is giving me this and this is giving me that. But then if I am crying that it's not giving me contentment, then 
I know that I wasn't doing that for that, right? And also in this kind of thing, just like what you said, that if I'm conscious and honest with myself, then in the very moment that when it is happening, I would know whether this is actually giving me some deep contentment or is it actually leading me into a perpetual waiting, waiting, waiting that once this happens, then that will happen, then that will happen, you know, and that then never arrives. So it's like, if I'm conscious, then I'm able to see that uh, this is just give, living me, you know, getting me into this perpetual weight. And I'm actually, you know, skipping moment by moment life. So when I'm conscious, I also become aware of that. And I think as in the beginning, we were sharing that whether this deep contentment is tangible or not. I think it is tangible. Because don't we know if we you know just close our eyes for a moment wherever we are and we try to reflect upon what were the most you know, like fulfilling moments in our life really deeply deeply fulfilling not gratifying but deeply fulfilling I think we will get to those few where we really listened to our heart's call and followed it stubbornly it's impossible that we don't know it it's just that we as he was sharing, you know, Nolinida was sharing that in the middle of force of circumstances and momenting of habit, we kind of, you know, they are just passed away, we, we ignore them. But we do, if we become conscious, if we become honest, then we do get to know what is benefiting and what is really not benefiting and making us really more into suffering. I do get to know. Because I, I see in myself that the moment I follow any ill will or any desire, I know that it's just making me so uneasy and now getting a taste for that easy life, you know, easy, not easy life. Of course, one has to put effort, but that sense of easiness in oneself, simple hearted, you know, light mind. Yeah. They still think that, you know, the loudness and the glitter of the temporary highs is very, it appears to be, oh, wow, you know, okay, at least I'll get that, right? It's so easy to go out for a drink on a Friday night, right? And even if you're not feeling good, just the fact that I must be feeling good because I'm here and see this is like you know out of a movie or something and that's what cool people do I give myself this false thing that this is good right this is good so again the whole concept of thank god it's Friday is that yeah absolutely I've often wondered upon this thank god it's Friday and I you know I wondered that it's like telling me that the four days that I'm working, five days I'm working, that really is not what I truly, truly want because then I'll not be needing a holiday from that. So whether it is the right thing still to you know, go on with and, or is it an indication that I must maybe, you know, change something in my life? Yeah. Because when I'm doing the right work, somehow I don't, that doesn't feel like work. You know, when you are actually following the right work, you know, to inner call, it actually feels like no matter how much effort you are putting, but there is a joy in that effort. So you don't need a break from that, that, oh, today I need a break from this session. <laughs> yeah. There was another small article related to this one, uh, but before that, any anything from... I know Jagan is driving and he had a lot of people in his car. He said he won't be able to unmute. But uh, Ritu or Aditi, if there's anything from your end. So this was the integral knowledge from the life divine. I think it's the life from life. 
we'll see what we can understand <laughs> right so uh anybody wanting to unmute and just read this yeah thank you Rishi. yeah so i'll read um the incarnate word we have in this unfolding of knowledge the two terms of the one and the many as we have the two terms of the finite and the infinite, of that which takes form and of that which does not take form, of spirit and matter, of the superconscient and the inconscient, and it is possible to define knowledge as the possession of one term and the possession of the other as ignorance. The aim of life then will be the drawing away from the one to the other. The leap from the ignorance to the knowledge and the rejection of the ignorance, the departure from the many into the one and from the finite into the infinite, from form into the formless, from the life of the material universe into the spirit, from the hold of the inconscient upon us into the sub-superconscient existence. Either they affirm inconscient matter or material force with inconscience as the beginning and inconscience as the end and consciousness only as a transitory middle term between the two or they perceive all as an ever-creative and evolutive life with mind and matter as the higher phenomenon and lower phenomenon, or else they conceive, all, they conceive of all as existing only in the mind or as the creations of the idea. Whatever, yeah. Whatever the standpoint, the aim of life can then be nothing but the fulfillment of life as we see it, the carrying of it to its highest mundane powers, the working out of nature and her laws and capacities without any thought of a beyond. Yeah, thank you. Again, I'm sorry. I think it was a bit... Yeah, but we, the basic crux, you know, what I really like was that, you know, how we were talking about consciousness, right? That now we are conscious of what isn't, what is not giving me, what is always promising me and what can possibly have something there in it, you know, which is not temporary. That is a bit, that is deeper, that is not superficial again i think i'm repeating myself so this you know line that the aim of life then will be the drawing away from the one to the other right if i know if i don't know then it's okay right like i can't do anything about it but when i start seeing then the leap from the ignorance to the knowledge rejection of the ignorance you know from i keep yeah, and the departure from the many into the one, from the finite into the infinite, from form into formless, from the life of the material universe into the spirit, and the hold of inconscient upon us into the super conscient existence. I think it's maybe going a little too... Actually, yeah. So here, as we see that how in life divine, he kind of gives them many, many things and then ultimately arrives at what he really wants to say. So here, I think it's just the middle part where he's saying, looking at the Advaitic tradition, where you just re reject the ignorance, you reject the false and superficial, and you go into the Nirvana or, you know, you find that non-duality and stay there but in integral yoga that is not our aim so that he will come to later but he was just sharing that it's not that we have to reject matter it's not that we have to reject ignorance the idea is complete transformation of each and every aspect of life which is falsehood and ignorance but that to that he comes later so yes 
it will be more worthy than we read the whole chunk yeah. maybe some day life divine chapter can be read here <laughs> yeah I think it would be more appropriate to take this one then. We'll just move on. So this is psychic education and spiritual education. So uh, I think just I want to add a few kind of experiential point here, uh, Joby, whatever yeah. is being discussed before this. Hmm. I think this setting of inner compass is you know, it's, I feel it's everyday requirement, like because my inner compass is distorted, you know, it's like always looking at material superficial, you know, satisfactions and no matter how hard one day I may read and understand, oh, you know, this is the aim of life. I didn't know that, you know, something like that. But it's like, it doesn't stay with me because as we were sharing that the overwhelming influence from around is so great that, and that is where I have been living in those grooves I have been living so as if that this setting has to be required every day like you know in India we have in other countries also we have this manual calendar in which every day you fix the date okay what is the date today okay, what is the day and all that so I think like that manually effort has to be put in setting the inner compass right because if the aim of this human life is progress, growth and, you know, divine fulfillment in the divine. Then there are many, many things which day to day bother me, which now will not matter that much. That it is a part of life to go through that. For example, <coughs> uh, you know, nowadays we were wondering at the kind of dying away, for example, or decaying away of a relative. And to many of us in the family, it appears like a shock. No matter that he has an old age, but even then it appears like, oh, how can that be? How can that be? But I am saying that how can then that not be? Because haven't we seen all around us that death and decay is part of our life and people do move on when the time is for their soul's journey, right? So where does this question arise that to just continue to live like almost a vegetable, you know, like you have no purpose, no really nothing aim in life, no growth, actual growth is happening because the capacity of the body has reduced or, you know, the mental capacity has, has have reduced. So I wonder that why does this appear like a shock to me? And why does living like just eating, sleeping and consuming not appear like a shock to me every day that I am doing. You know? so just like wondering that if, and also the, the, the amount of effort that I need to put every day to set the inner compass right. I think that's also very important because if I come back to it after seven days, then again it appears like a shock. Oh, I forgot that the aim of human life was progress. You know, And then things again become okay, okay in my life. Then again, I forget. <laughs> So this forgetfulness like is really, yeah, it's very stark. Yeah. Just wanted to share that. Yeah, the slippery slopes, it feels as so slippery that to hold my ground, I have to keep on reminding myself and checking within that yeah what what is it right what am i looking for what is the important thing here rather than the things that really make me go up and down all the time so one question here um so what, what we read and what you uh, discussed, it's that the aim of human life is not happiness, it's progress. So when we are progressing, we feel fulfilled. 
and fulfillment is something which gives us joy so when we talk about progress so what can we say is progress i mean being conscious all the time of where we are heading to what we are doing is it giving us fulfillment so that we would call progress yeah i think uh, it's again very relative right like for anybody anywhere at any point of time if we just take the definition of progress it's just doing a little better whatever the better could be whatever my better is than before right so and when i'm conscious i realize what i what is happening right like it was darkness like you know how i'm being danced around by forces by conditioning by habits by patterns by cultures and when i become conscious i start realizing ki oh i think this because that thing i'm liking this because you know 10 years back i did this and i liked it so i continue to like it like it like it i might not like it so just because when i become more conscious of the why is and stuff like how is it working and when i instead of being the slave of those tendencies those patterns or circumstances when i can now stop myself or even see that i have the possibility of stopping here maybe i'm not even to even be able to stop right now but i see that stopping is where i need to be that is progress when i stop a little bit that's progress when i fully stop that's progress you know again when it's a excellent question because what is progress right and Yeah, so any time when I'm able to, and I'm sure you would agree from your own experiences, the things that used to move me, the people who used to really frustrate me, irritate me, make me angry, now when I see them, maybe I don't move that much. Maybe I feel rather compassion rather than anger or you know frustration. So and we know, we know because we feel it inside. We see the difference inside. yeah so progress i think would be uh, would be like depending on the circumstances and environment let's say somebody is extremely poor he wants to come out of poverty and he progresses in this uh, trial of coming out of poverty that would also be progress if somebody is very short tempered he wants to progress by improving his temper so that would be progress so being conscious and seeing where you are lacking consciously and then moving ahead to try and change it yeah because we do need effort right like being conscious also after being conscious also there is a will right there is something that we need to do to not make that happen we prayers aspirations efforts if all those things again are required and like you rightfully said for each one they would have their own definition of what do i want to be where do i want to go like you said if somebody is poor and he wants to be you know better off he will do the things that he can do and if he becomes better for him that is great progress and sadly that's the progress that we mostly see right the settlements the houses the cars right that shows okay everything is all said that person must be truly happy and comfortable right and we realize that's not true most of the times i would want to say all but i stick to most and uh, yeah yeah so a little bit like like um that word charai veti charai veti that means keep moving on so basically the thing is to be conscious and to keep moving on hmm. because you know when i aspire for just happiness and comfort i keep stopping right i keep getting satisfied and i keep stopping okay, this is it i don't even know there is more but if my aim is not just small 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 temporary doses of happiness encounters of happiness but it's actually progress i will keep you know that's very 
motivating and that's always like there's so much work to do more that you can see yeah we are not stopping not stopping like you know they say that there's no end to perfection perfection doesn't have a definition right okay when you reach this point there's perfection and that's the beauty right like there is no end point like frustrating point also and yet beautiful point as well that right So probably for a student progress would be um, to keep on clearing his uh, classes i mean fifth class sixth class i mean that would be also progress yeah as in when you go to the ways of progress but for a yeah. student you know there's a maximum of 100 marks say for example there is that upper limit hmm. yeah i was just going to add and completely resonate with the discussion that for example for a little child who is not able to balance in playing on maybe a pipe or wherever he is walk- walking and one day is trying trying you know just like playfully he is trying and one day is able to walk so without knowing that he is making progress he is actually making progress nobody has to tell oh see you you know you made progress but mm-hmm. he has made a progress of concentrating his mind and stilling his body in such a manner that he is able to walk on a rope or whatever hai na and for a person who is like taru is sharing always angry and very frustrated at and one day he just like one moment in one moment he may become conscious oh you know but i don't want to do that and steps back from that frustration or anger progress yeah hai na to choti choti cheeze and even material things because there also we put effort and even if they are like material satisfactions but they are also would be you know kind of in the collective of progress only because for a person who has so far not earned more than 100 bucks a day now he is able to earn 200 a day so that's progress in that sphere for a person who has been totally a miserly fellow not able to give away anything he today he just out of kindness he gives away something you know progress so bilkul context to context you know like mm-hmm. for a person who speaks a lot like me <laughs> to step back from speaking is that moment you know maybe a progress but i may slip again but in that moment you know yeah yeah yes. so basically being conscious of what you're doing because a lot of times we feel that we are progressing but then if we just sit back and see and think we might differ in our definition of what is progress yeah and parallelly always always i think if we are conscious if we are with ourselves we always get to know where there was true progress always where the action or the word the speech you know whatever stepping back you did and that was what needed to be done we always know that if only we become mm-hmm. inward you know conscious of ourselves yeah Right. Yeah, Aditi, I think you had unmuted. I don't know, was it by mistake, or you wanted to share something? No, I was just thinking what you said. Like it should also be. I don't know. Like I speak a lot, but I don't know if I want to stop speaking as much. <laughs> Don't take it on your heart, Aditi. It was about me. <laughs> Please speak. You must speak. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm listening. See, I'm sitting in a car and listening. <laughs> I think parallelly, just because you shared this, you know, for a person who has not been able to discuss and reflect so far, and has been stepping back from that. for that person it may be actually a progress and will be a progress uh, when he is able to express with clarity what he wants to share so that's progress also so we would really want you to share whenever you feel like yeah. we i always share i tend to overshare but <laughs> that's not a problem you know how amazing it is they say that that progress is so you know if they are like i don't know 50000 people in a room it would be different for different people right and i think that's why they say that 
be conscious because what are you progressing at right where is the progress taking you and that's why they say that you know how Sri Aurobindo says and it's Ritu's favorite line that an aimless life is a miserable life right because if I'm just progressing or if I'm just achieving things not even caring what I'm achieving right because achieving yay you know it's a good thing but not what I'm achieving you know not what are the battles that I'm fighting? Like that's more important than if I'm winning or not. But that's not how it's usually portrayed, right? Anytime you win anything, it's like, wow, you won. But what did you win? That is very much more important than just, oh, I won, I won, I won. Absolutely. And that's why after this line comes that, uh, you know, what, that depending upon the quality of your aim, will be the quality of your life so what you were sharing that you know what am i progressing at what am i running towards so that would be really you know the judging aspect yeah and that's why very often we become very kind of dull after a long time running after our little personal aims like what after this you know because the human satisfaction is not there in those little little things no matter how big they appear they may appear so okay property job bacha marriage you know all that is there but what after this you know so that's why because we are born for something greater than just material possessions and satisfactions yeah and that's what people call midlife crisis Yes, please. Yeah, go I'm going through one, right? That's why. So I feel like that that was my thing, right? Because yes, okay, I have a house, husband who loves me, have a child, have a job. They still keep me around. Like I like knock on wood, like I have a good life, right? But then I would feel this emptiness, which would be like, what more? Like, um, you know, like I have wonderful friends, like you like I'm blessed, right? But then I still would feel this emptiness. And I would just create issues just to, I guess, then I was like, okay, this is not going to work. So, and I think COVID helped to some extent. So it was just one of those things right, that, that we said that you may have everything and mostly people are not happy. Like, I think now I feel I'm content with what I have, you know, like I'm working on it, um, but it is hard work, right? Like just having to understand what you want um, and not even want, it's like just being, you know, like, what's the whole point as you said so aimless yeah having that aim to figure it out and that's why I know Taru was asking would you come I said yeah I'll come I'm running around doing few things but I, I want to listen in because I feel this is one thing that grounds me or gives me food for thought for the next you know like and keeps me grounded so so yeah You know, a lot of times, even after when we can clearly see what's not working for me, my energy keeps going into the same things because that's how I have been rolling, right? So I think that is also very important that now that if I can see that I ran after this so much and after having so much, I again, if I was just feeling discontent and the next time I look at you know a bigger car or a faster or I don't know the most whatever and then I have this feeling that yeah this is what I want to buy I can stop and question myself that Achha, really you want to do this again how many times you know oh, so just yeah. that's also something that you're very clever it lasts for a yeah it lasts for a week max and then it's like now what <laughs> And I think day to day, uh, just, just like you shared that even when we may know in the beginning that, okay, you know, what is, what must be given priority out of a habit of running in the same groove, I'm not able to give it priority. And that's why we see that, you know, it's like almost we need like childlike stubbornness in this case, you know, that as, as if I'm just struggling and many a times, you know, in our lives also, although we may, you know, conduct sessions but we see that things are happening 
but as if you are stubborn about this know that you know one has to make it because we can manage it you know it's like put a little effort and you can manage it and why because it's important and you know it it must be given priority so i i see that you know many a times we are talking that no this is important for me you know listening to this or understanding this reflecting upon this is important for me but i will do this after my children graduate you know that and that after never comes because after children graduate their teenage their puberty you know whatever you know is going on and on and on and although i may think intellectually that i am giving something else more priority but i am not if i look at my actions i am not so as if like i think parallelly at at each moment of life i have to look at the past neural connection that has been made and stop myself from running back in the same groove and create a new groove for myself which is more skillful more beneficial for me now you know so really stubbornly caring for my own deeper contentment really stubbornly caring for that yeah it may be actually it actually at times it may appear like a mad kind of a life in the beginning because it's not in the same grooves as society would think yeah Uh, you know, I was uh, reading on uh, something about stubbornness today, and the topic just came. So, just this portion, at least, I would you know, want to share. So, would anybody like to read it? Yes, the highlighted part, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Please. Oh, I would very much like to have the result of my efforts. You must know that very persistent efforts, a very steadfast endurance are necessary to master the least weakness, the least pettiness, the least meanness in one's nature. What is the use of talking about divine love if one can't love without egoism what is the use of talking about immortality if one is stubbornly attached to the past and the present and if one doesn't want to give anything in order to receive everything yeah just just this you know this attachment to the things like to the past very much like in the sense questioning that right like we're talking about i don't know what and where am i stuck like what am i aspiring for and on, at the same time looking at where am i standing and what i need to do you know like the, how much persistent effort and endurance are necessary to master the least weakness the least pettiness the least meanness in one's nature because usually i've seen that you know for small small things when we are not able to give them up rather than being more sincere we just say much se nahi hoga you know like it's too hard it's too strong that's my nature now that's my habit i can't change as i hu main so we give up too easily and the stubbornness is needed and we cannot give it easily because we have put in too much energy into going on one route right and to develop a new trail needs a lot of energy and we have time we have energy because where is my energy going anyway so might as well put it here as well you know when you were reading it when ritu was reading it i reminded i just it just came to me that as there are several approaches to the same thing and each one will approach in the manner suitable to that person uh to question the stubborn sticking to the past so i could see that there are two ways here at least two at least two there may be more but at least two i could see 
one is to so when i approach it mentally then i would question that okay i have been doing this so far no what has it given me and how long shall i continue to carry this old baggage with me so tark vitark and questioning and reasoning which absolutely you know is the good ruse use of reason the other way i was feeling uh, which is more close to how i you know personally use things is that the way of feeling so one is the way of understanding through reason and purely using reason which also leads us towards truth and other is the way of feeling because if i truly sit back and slow down and if i truly begin to feel how i feel about this certain thing you know how i feel about when i take this step and i don't take that step you know then i get the answers and there also i need to be very stubborn in the sense to be intuitive to know that okay this is what i am feeling and no matter the facts may be saying something else but i want to you know really go by what i am truly feeling so just like you know bhakti yoga karma yoga and gyan yoga the different approaches you know just talking about these three so i was looking at the aspect of questioning also you know leading me to the same thing and though for those of us who are more emotional and more bhav oriented you know they for them it could be okay how does it make me feel am i really deeply feeling contented or you know making feeling that this is the right thing to do because my way i could see when ritu was reading that my way has not been that much of questioning but more of a feeling how do i feel yeah just that Uh, I was reading about you know some people who have had NDEs, near death experiences and stuff. And nine out of ten experiences that I read, you know, people came back with a purpose. Like you know, it, they were shown that this is why you were sent, but then they get lost. And then when they came back after you know that experience, they just. straight you know dived ahead into that reason and develop this uh, i don't know explored that discovered this so and yeah how you know almost everything about this aim and this purpose is like find what gives you joy right like it's like you know that compass and i do everything other than that right like i just keep either have totally suppressed that if somebody asks me what is it that you want to do you know i get lost because i could say okay no i want to have popcorn that's something i can do and those things come very naturally but if somebody really questions you a very and this is such a simple question right that what do you really like to do you know what makes you truly happy most of us are just lost right and that's sad like again just talking from my own experience because you keep getting lost in so much on the surface that you lose touch with oh i used to like this right i used to yeah so just if it goes for the purpose for the aim for that i don't know like i don't know how it's weird how all of us are sent with something and yet most of us are just doing those similar mundane things running after those five ten things and losing why we were here like and it and many a times we also get the answer that you know in this when what gives you joy when we have lost it you know for a long time when we have not been in touch with our true what brings us joy many times the answers that we hear are very saddening because one of the most common answer is uh, watching tv so and after, if you question further that okay there must be something more as if we have gotten too disconnected from it and we can't find it 
and as a child we had it naturally you know but we can't find it so that's why mother says you know this digging is required this exploration is required that what truly truly you know brings me joy yeah And we were talking about, you know, midlife crisis and how I think we had discussed that once, right? That we reach a phase where we feel that nothing is doing it, right? Like I'm feeling empty. So instead of connecting with that emptiness, I go out and I buy another sports car, right? That this will fulfill me. And I post it on Facebook and Insta and I, everybody, you know, comments and I'm like, again, I don't know what does that what it does to me and yet life keeps giving me signals keeps giving me signals and because I'm so used to looking in one direction that I have to possess I have to add that this does not even strike me you know when you were talking about progress it also struck me that you were saying uh, how if you are if you don't give giving is a progress similarly if you don't know how to receive Receiving is a progress, right? Like, again, depending on personality to personality and how different the progress would be, the aims would be. And yet how, yeah, again, the similarity, the mundaneness, the robotic nature, the mechanical nature of being lost is there. And if we see it, maybe we can, in our capacity, change it for ourselves little by little. And so I will not be uh, taking up the new passage. We'll uh, take it next time. But yeah, we have a few minutes in case there are more reflections on this or anything. Yeah, so Monica spoke about stubbornness. And I think it's so important. But somehow while growing up, we are taught not to be very stubborn, to let go. And that's a uh, excuse we find, I think, for a lot of things that I'm not able to do it, forget it. I think it's more of escapism than being actually wanting to do something. But we do it. I mean, I do it a lot of time. Instead of being stubborn for the right things, I probably give myself the excuse, okay, doesn't matter, koi baat nahi, let it go, ho jayega be nice to myself by not doing things in a very stubborn manner. So these days, you know, next to my um, uh, bedroom window, there are there's a pot and there's a pigeon which has come and laid eggs there. It does it. I think it's become an annual affair for that pigeon. So I am really impressed seeing that pigeon, how stubborn it is to bring out the baby from the egg. All the time, whenever I wake up, or sleep, or in the middle of the night, or when it's very sunny, I see the pigeon is always sitting on the egg. So it's very inspiring to see the pigeon that how stubbornly it wants something and it's doing it. So I'll just show it to you. <laughs> um. Can you see it? Yeah, or there's a reflection or something. Yes, visible. Wow. <laughs> All the time, it's so impressive how determined the pigeon is. So, yeah. Actually, we are stubborn too, but what we are stubborn at or for, that's, I think, a very important question because... We, there, is, there are areas where we are very stubborn. Good how everything is a motivation, how everyone is a guru. Yeah, you had unmuted, Monica. No, that was that point in time, so it's okay. 
द मोमेंट इज गोन just one example from somewhere i wanted to share but that's okay no so give it because we are ending anyway we have a few no i so before the the part before the stubbornness we were uh, talking about uh, although you know completely resonating that parallelly in our life we are very very stubborn <laughs> so but for the wrong things for things which are not benefiting so totally resonate with that so before that we were talking about you know like uh, every moment we have a choice to whether look out for superficial satisfactions or really what gives me contentment so one moment in time i was majorly reminded of why because at that point of time i was making uh, consciously this transition of what brings me true contentment you know now it is still there like effort is there but now it's like that's the way one lives you know and there is no other choice but that time i remember because i was consciously making this choice of okay in this moment of time let me be conscious what truly brings me contentment and that is what i would do so i remember i was just going out of my house in dwarka we were there and there there were two possibilities i i just wanted a quiet time with myself so either i could uh, go to a salon which i wanted to go maybe get hair cut or whatever or there was a fog road i was standing actually a fog road this side is the salon and this side is the gurudwara where i could sit some so for some time and really you know like uh, connect with myself and i asked myself i remember stopping at the midway at the fog road and i asked myself okay which way would i want to go if today is the last day of my life and of course the choice was apparent and so i think that really helped me Uh, also you know looking at okay this is the last day of last moment of my life would i blurt out this word or would i not blurt out this word you know would i take a stand for this would i not take a stand so that really has helped me at at lot of places and moments to make the right choice for me you know which gives me deeper joy yeah just that so on that always then i always think back it's like if today was my last day you know um would i really be thinking about this and mostly the answer is no way in hell right like it's like no way um and i think the other thing also is like um i i don't know it just put things in perspective right is this something as important that um i do want to think about it you know so it helps letting things go for me because to be honest i feel not even 0.5% of the things we think about the whole day are worth thinking about so so that's a good way to think i feel i do that all the time so we must just have to remember to ask that question right we often forget and as soon as we remember the answer is clear and yet we don't ask it often enough that what if this was the last day yeah right and i think the other i i said it before also it's the gratitude part right like just being grateful for what we have and even if we are on this journey to discover you know what we want and i feel you run into people who support your journey so you reaching out to me it's like you supporting me like consciously so i feel like you run into people where your path is laid to you just have to be aware and um wanting to do your path right i i also feel because then you attract the kind of books the kind of people who support your journey and you leave behind the people who do not add to your um goals i guess so yeah and that's very important the reassessment and the pauses and the renovations that we have to do to make sure that the you know the foundation is strong and it looks beautiful
um, yeah no it's hard uh, for me the biggest was like as I said just being able to say no to people or um, now I, I can feel if my energy is being um, affected negatively then I just have to figure out how to distance myself and you know but then um, but there are times when I get stuck in it and that's okay because it's learning right like that's how you learn and I feel like there are some people you just can't get away from so then it's like you learn how to not let them affect you so it's yeah yeah Yeah, any last comments? Okay, so uh, we'll end here. Thank you again for joining and for staying till the end. And yeah, see you again so, soon. Yes, Ritu. This incarnate world, it's a book. Uh, it's a basically yes. online database or where she or windows and mothers and I think some of the disciples to the writings like articles like you just say if you're reflecting on wondering about say stubbornness and if you mm -hmm. just type stubbornness you know you okay. get so many articles on that so basically if I go back here so I can write say stubborn and then I have to just there's so much where she spoke about or he spoke about stubborn and then you go through things and you can read about them. So one has to take a membership in online? No, no, no. It's an online free database. Okay, okay. See, and when the body refuses, it refuses with the stubbornness of a stone. It mm -hmm. hoga he mm -hmm. so It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a very good thing. And plus, if you're looking for a phrase, like, you know, the purpose yeah. of life. So you can even press this exact or anything. So it's very good. And uh, the uh, Life Divine, that's a book. That's a yeah. book and also available on Incarnate World. So everything nowadays, see, Divine has made things very simple for us. It's we yeah. who want to run, you know, for buying and things otherwise there is no need to buy anything actually nowadays everything is available on the net so so life divine is an encyclopedia it's like a, yes it's like an encyclopedia yes so if as saru was sharing any word that you want to reflect upon you search and then you can go through the results of that search okay all free <laughs> okay so I'll stop the recording and before I do that, just taking one minute to just, I don't know, uh, you know, um, be grateful for this opportunity to connect, grateful for, you know, the incarnate word, the resources that we have in today's time. You know how we were talking about TV and yet the social media also has made the world such a small place that what all of us closer. So just grateful and wishing that everybody be well and happy, truly well and truly happy. Thank you.